Also, dating a girl who does not or cannot pay for your haircut is a form of self-sabotage, self-hatred, and self-disgust. Listen to that again. Would you ever sign a prenup? Uh, yeah. You would? I absolutely would. I don't think I could do it without. I want to be able to decide where my assets go if we divorce. What if he was a multimillionaire? In that case, yeah. no. What? If it's to my advantage, then yes, absolutely, a prenup. So if he was richer than you, then you wouldn't sign it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Guess I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> so I had a conversation with my homegirl a couple of weeks ago. She called me during lunch. Baby, let me tell y'all something. I am a foodie. I do not like answering the phone whenever I'm eating because I love for my food to be hot. But if I love you, I'll take the phone call. She's upset. She's screaming. She's crying. She's mad. She goes into why she's upset. Then she starts kind of spiraling. She starts saying, you know, I don't need him. Talking about her husband. I don't need him. I can do this alone. I can leave him right now. I'm going to leave him. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Each time that she had a break and that rant that she was going on, I tried to speak. She wouldn't allow me to speak. My friends already know. I'm the person I don't like to therapize my friends unless I absolutely need to. But I am really big on helping people understand that sometimes when your emotions are so high, it clouds your judgment and you say very irrational things and you act irrationally. Now, granted, as I'm listening, I realize that what he did, it didn't warrant this reaction. This is something else that's going on. She's going on a deep end, okay? And like I said, I like my food to be hot. So I'm eating, I'm listening, but I really don't like to be disturbed when I'm eating. So I'm like, all right, hold on, honey. You're going to let me speak. You're going to give me a little moment. I'll let you vent. Like at this point, this is over 30 minutes. I've let you vent. I've let you get it out. Do you want me to say anything? And she's like, no. She's like, I already know what you're going to say. No, I don't want to hear that right now. Okay, that's fine. I've listened to this conversation. I've listened to you speak and run in circles. And not one time, because it seemed like every time you got quiet, you wanted me to interject. That's what it seemed like to me. But then when I did so, you started talking over me. So, so. I told you, you know what, I'm going to let you figure that out. Whenever you're ready to have a conversation about this and actually work towards a solution, you can call me. But as of right now, I'm going to enjoy my food boundaries. <laughs> now to get to the point, after a couple of days passed by, once, you know, she was kind of like resolved in her mind, her temper was better. She was able to actually process things. She calls me. Unfortunately, the damage was already done in her marriage. But she calls me and she says, I need your help. Okay. All right. Now. Now we're working with something. Now, let me make sure that I have the capacity to be able to help you. Luckily, that day I did. So she was like, in this situation, Kitty, what would you tell a couple? Okay. The main thing is that she kept on saying that she didn't need her husband. My first go-to is, did you tell him that? Did you tell this man that you didn't need him? She says, yes. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay. How did that go? What was his response? He blew up. Okay, well, if you don't need me, I don't need to be here. They ended up sleeping in separate beds that night, didn't talk to each other for a couple of days. So then I asked her, okay, do you feel like you don't need him? I don't need him. I don't need him. I can do this alone. I'm independent, blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. So leave him. That's not the answer I wanted, Kitty. Well, stop saying that you don't need him. You married this man. This is your partner in life. Stop telling your spouse that you don't need him. This is your husband. So if you don't know, I'm all about perspectives. So let's look at different perspectives. All right. You say you don't need your husband. All right. You got friends? Yeah. You need your friends? Absolutely, I need my friends. Okay, why do you need your friends? We go down a list. They're my support. Whenever I'm going through things, I can talk to them. We share memories. We laugh together. We go through life together. All of that. Okay. You need your friends. Do you have those same moments with your husband? I heard her smack her lips. No, let's be for real. Let's 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 be for real. Do you not share laughter with your husband? Do you not get through life with your husband? Do you not get different perspectives and advice and support and, and encouragement and things like that from your husband? Yeah. In that moment, you didn't. Or am I mistaken? She goes, in that moment, I didn't. I felt like I wasn't getting the right amount of support. So you just completely cut off your husband and say, you've done with him. You don't need him because in a moment he had something that pushed against, or maybe in a moment he had a, a just whatever, just human fault, because we're human. He had a moment where he couldn't be the support that you needed. But whenever your friends can't be supportive or they're going through their own things, you don't say that you're going to cut your friends off. I hear her choke up. All right. So I'm like, all right, let me... <laughs> 
lighten up because I hear she, she's crying and stuff now. You know, she's trying to hide the fact she's crying, but you can hear about her nose sniffs and all that stuff. All right. And so I'm like, all right, let's, let me slow down with you real quick. Exactly what do you need from me right now? And she was like, tell me exactly what you would tell your couples. So I tell her, baby, men need to be needed. <laughs> That's where their sense of purpose comes from. That's where a lot of their fulfillment comes from. Men are taught to be protectors, providers, problem solvers, and they want to feel valuable. And so they really need those meaningful connections. That's how they express their love and care. Now, even with these roles, it doesn't mean that they will not drop the ball. They're humans. When we speak of human element, people go through things. People have life experiences, situations that sometimes alter the way they see things. It alters their empathetic responses, but it doesn't mean that they don't care about you. It just means that in that moment, they probably can't give you the response that you actually need. So then she goes, well, why did, why did he draw back? Why did he just walk out? Why did he just stop talking to me? Because you told him you don't need him. <laughs> if he doesn't feel valued, you simply don't need him. You just hit his confidence, right? You just really took a jab at his esteem. Why is he going to be motivated to do more when you just specifically told this man? In, in other words, he's not valuable to you. I pull back then and I say, okay, let me not come from a psychological standpoint. Let me talk to you as your sister in Christ. You are a believer of God. When you married your husband, you came together under God and God granted you that union. So now we need to make sure that we keep this union together, tight knit, even in these hard moments, we do so. That's your partner through life, through the good and the bad. Your husband is your sounding board during difficult times, but it doesn't mean that he doesn't have his own difficult times. And in their nature of being strong, because that's the expectation and that's the way they've been conditioned, men don't always show that. They don't always show those moments of weakness. So from a more biblical standpoint, I told her, I said, you need your husband. Let's get into the word. I said, the word says that your husband is supposed to support and guide you and your family to faith. That is in the book of Ephesians, honey. God gave Eve to Adam. Adam needed a companion. But even when he gave Eve to Adam, they both became partners in life. They were one another's support. They loved one another. They processed and went through life with one another, regardless of what happened. You need your husband. That is your mental, emotional, physical, spiritual safeguard. He is the provider and a protector of you, your marriage, your home, baby. Ephesians 5.25 talks about your husband loving you as Christ loved the church. That's sacrificial love. <laughs> what better love than sacrificial love to understand selflessness and commitment we need that as wives we need to experience that we need our children to see that not only is he your husband he's your children's father he plays a significant role in the household a father's active role in a household is important in our household we need support we need guidance we need direction that sometimes we as wives and mothers simply cannot give and the children's father, your husband is there for moral development. He is absolutely necessary. The word speaks on the importance of a husband and a wife's union. We need that. So she listens and she actually takes it all in. And she's like, you know what, Kate? This is why I love you. I can't stand you because you get me together, but I love you. <laughs> and I say all things with love. My circle, they already know what it is. But let me tell you something. I, as I would tell any of my clients... When your emotions are high, your judgment is clouded. And a lot of times when we're operating from such intense emotions, we say very hurtful things that are consequential that we cannot take back. We can't take those things back. Be mindful of what you say when you are angry. Be slow to saying angry things. Those brash, hurtful things, be slow to them. And I understand that in a moment you're so upset, but baby, you got to get that together. Because it's so much power in telling a man you don't need him. There's so much power in you telling your husband you don't need him. Don't let the enemy come into your marriage. First of all, don't let the enemy attack your husband. Because the enemy can use you to attack and break down your husband. Okay? We need our significant others. As wives, we need our husbands. And husbands need their wives. Remember that. Okay? Bye, babies. If there's one thing I know that social media has amplified is how selfish women can be.
are kidding not you know when this uh, lady when i saw this video and if you guys know me by now if you're watching my videos you know how how much i love you know reading the comments on any video i come across so i spent a while to read the comments and majority of the women were like oh the man must have done something to bring us to this state blah 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 why 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 is she not speaking against what the man has done and i'm like why is it always that when we see a video of a, a, a of a woman doing something wrong to a man the women are quick to ask oh the man must have done something or oh, what did the man do but when we see that of a man doing something wrong to the woman, oh, you need to see the woman, everybody will be coming for the man. Nobody will be, nobody will you know, chastise the woman in that in that regard. But when is the woman doing wrong? Oh, they are quick to say, oh, the man must have done something because a woman will never do this. A woman don't do that. A woman will not do this. I don't know if, if we are truly allergic to holding ourselves accountable as women. And it's becoming very glary with, as the day is going by. We need to really stop doing this and i'm happy that this one held her friend accountable and a lot of women were saying that oh, why would she why would she be posting about her friend on social media did her friend give her permission to do that forgetting the fact that it is her friend and they know her and she i love how she was even responding that it is my friend she saw this video before you are seeing it i don't even know why we like as women we think we want to be we want to be you know speaking on behalf of another woman saying oh I'm a girl's girl. No, we are not any girl's girl. I, I think that terminology is even bad because we don't even like to hold ourselves accountable. So we shouldn't even be saying I'm a girl's girl. Anybody that's saying I'm a girl's girl, then you should be able to hold your fellow girl accountable. Other than if not, please go and sit down. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye, guys. Ciao, ciao.